Hi, uh, this is actually the second part of this presentation. Uh, this time we're going to focus on bitwise operations. Oh, and there they are. Um, you know, so we talked about and, or, and not as they apply to, to binary ones and zeros. And we did this in the previous video. Um, we can actually apply and, or, and not, and XOR, and, and some of our other things, to um, individual bits of uh, a long binary string. So we call those the bitwise operation. Uh, so this is the bitwise and. So we have two binary values, and we apply the and operation to the corresponding bits. Um, in Java and in C and some other languages, it's represented by a single ampersand. So yes, we can do this in Java um, and, and in C as long as we use the single ampersand operator. And the result is not going to be true or false. It's going to be actually an integer, as we'll, we'll see in a bit. So here I have a couple of binary uh, strings. And again, it doesn't matter if they're integers or floating point or whatever. The where we're, these operations are just on the bits themselves. So we look at corresponding bits. So the zero and the one becomes a zero. One and zero is a zero. One and one is a one. One and one is a one, and so forth. So anywhere you have a one and a zero, or a zero and a one, or a zero and a zero, you get a zero. Anywhere you have a one and a one, you get a one. Same rules as, as we had before with ands. It's just now we're applying it across um, the entirety of a, of a couple of binary strings. One of the more useful things we can do with a bitwise and is we can use it to isolate certain bits, pull certain bits out of a value and just look at those. Um, and the way we do that is we create what's called a mask. So in my example, I'm curious about something here. Uh, I'm curious about what the lower four bits are. So what I can do is and them with this bit mask. Four zeros, four ones. Everywhere there's a zero, I'm going to zero out my original value. Everywhere there's a one, I am going to preserve those those bits. So out of my original 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, the 1, 1, 1, 1s anded with it just bring those into my result. We actually see this kind of, of operation a lot of places. Uh, one place you'll see it is uh, maybe later on when you, you do some networking stuff, um, uh, net masks and, and how we, we divide up the IPv4 and IPv6 uh, address spaces using, uh, using net masks. Uh, next up is the bitwise or, and this is just like a, the bitwise and, except now we're doing the ors of the corresponding bits. Uh, it's represent, represented by a single pipe character, and again, this works in Java and C. And so if we take those same two values, um, anywhere we have a 0 and a 1, we get a 1 if we or them together. Um, so there's a 1 and 0, which of course gives us 1. Any place we have a 1 and a 1, of course, we get a 1. And the only place we actually get a zero is if we have two zeros together. Useful thing we can do with a bitwise or is to set individual bits of a value. So let's say I have some unknown 8-bit value, and this would happen in a, in a program. Uh, that, that we're, we're, we're working on. We have some unknown 8-bit value, and we want to ensure, for example, that bits 0 and 5 get set to 1. So we make a, uh, we or it with a value where everything is 0 except bits 5 and, and 0. That will guarantee that when we or it with, with something else, that bits 5 and 0 will be set. We don't know what the others are. We don't care what we but what we care about is that uh, after this operation has occurred, that those are, are, are both ones. Uh, we also have a bitwise exclusive or in, um, in Java and in C. It's represented by the caret. Now, I see a lot, uh, especially in, in, in CS1, students think we can use the caret as um, an exponent operator. So they'll write 2 caret 3 and expect it to uh, give me 8. Um, unfortunately for them, the caret is a valid operator in Java. It just doesn't do what they think it does. 
this is what it does. It actually performs a bit bitwise exclusive or uh, between our two values. So anywhere you have a zero and a one, you get a one. Anywhere you have a one and a zero, you get a one. If you have two ones together, you get zero. And if you have two zeros together, you get a zero, consistent with the rules of, of exclusive or. Uh, you also have a bitwise not, um, and it, it simply inverts all the bits of a binary value. Uh, again, in Java and C, we can do this, and we use the tilde operator. If you don't know where the tilde is, it is probably the upper left-hand key on your keyboard. And here's an example, tilde or not of this. We change the 1 to a 0, we change the 0 to 1 all the way through. So it takes the not of every bit. Uh, we can do some, some some things we call shifts. Uh, the first is called a left shift. And in Java and C, this is um, two uh, less than symbols side by side. Um, so we have a value. So here is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And say we left shift it by one bit. We take everything here, move it over to the left here. And shift in a, a zero. So that would be shifting by one. Um, you can also shift by other values like six. So you take uh, everything, this is an eight bit value, so we take the last two bits, move them all the way over six, and shift in zeros. When we do a shift operation, it is based on um, the the data type the, the number of bits that were in the original value um, so we don't add more bits off to the left we just they fall off the end and, and, and we lose them and usually this happens either you know with a like a byte in java would would be an 8-bit shift and int would be a 32-bit shift and, and things like that um, we have what's called a logical right shift and this is to distinguish it from an arithmetic right shift, which we'll see in the next slide. Um, in Java and C, for unsigned integers, it's represented by um, two greater than symbols right after each other. With a, a logical right shift is just the analog of a left shift. So we move some bits over, we shift in zeros uh, on the left-hand side. So if I take this expression and I shift it right, these bits are preserved. They move over one, one position, and we put a zero in on the left. If we took the same thing and, and, and shifted it by six, we preserve these two, they get all the way over to the right, and we shift in six zeros on the left. This, this is a, a logical right shift. It's in contrast to an arithmetic right shift. So the idea behind an arithmetic right shift is that if the number is negative, we're going to let it stay negative. And if the number is positive, we're going to let it stay positive. Uh, this is just for integers. Um, in Java, this is represented by three greater than or equal symbols. Uh, in C, it's uh, two greater than symbols, um, and it only works if, if the data type is signed. So here we have uh, two examples. One is negative. One is, is positive if we interpret them as, as signed integers. Um, notice this one has a one in the leftmost position because it would be, it would be negative if interpreted as a, a signed int. Um, and let's say we shift it right by three. We shift in three ones and preserve whatever's left. So it would have been, the in this case, um, these five bits would be shifted over. So it, we can also think this as a sign extension. For uh, a positive version, so one that has a zero in the, the leftmost position or the most significant bit position, it works just like a, a logical shift right. So we keep the, keep the same sign. Note that bitwise and, bitwise or, bitwise exclusive or, um, shift left, logical shift right, um, not uh, bitwise not, and arithmetic shift right, these all can operate on integers uh, in Java. So if I had int x equals 255, 
int y equals some really weird value. Uh, I could set, set z equal to the not of y shifted by 16 bits. Bitwise ended with the value in x. And the question is, what is the value of z? Um, and I tell you, and what I'm going to do with this example um, is in just a moment, I'm going to splice in um, some whiteboard uh, where I, I, I work through that value of z and we'll see what comes of it. Okay, this is the worked example that uh, we, we saw on the previous slide. Uh, I have um, a quantity that has the not of y uh, right shifted by 16 uh, anded with x. Now, these are Java ints, so they are 32 bits, so I'm probably going to be <laughs> writing out a lot of bits on this, so bear with me. Um, let's look at... Um, the integer values of them of them first though. So here we have the not of y was eight seven six five six seven eight nine. We're going to right shift that by sixteen and end it with two fifty five. All right, let's let's focus on uh, just this for now. I'm going to put that into my calculator, so give me a second. You can't see me doing this, but I'm, I'm on my other computer uh, pulling up Windows Calculator, and it's uh, 8765, 6789. And the binary for that is in 32 bits. 0, 1, So that's, that's just why. There we go. Um, we're going to, uh, first of all, invert it. So let's do that. Um, so take each bit, and uh, if it's a 0, change it to a 1. If it's a 1, change it to a 0. So that would be 1, one zero one zero one zero one zero. So that took care of the invert operation. Now we're going to um, right shift by sixteen, and because we're using only two um, greater than symbols, this is a logical right shift. So we're going to shift in. Um, uh, um, actually, am I, am I backwards? Let me double check. I can never remember which one's which. Yes, this is a logical right shift because of, of the two. If it were three, it'd be an arithmetic right shift. So because of that, we, we shift in, in zeros. Um, it's 16. I actually have a 32-bit number here, which makes it a little easier for me, so I can... Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is, I don't have all, all 32 bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There should actually be an additional four zeros in front of the original one and four ones in front of the inverted. I almost uh, got, got caught by that. So now I actually have a 32-bit number. Since I'm uh, right shifting by 16, the lower 16 bits are going to fall out. And the upper 16 bits will be preserved, only moved into the lower four bytes. So let's write them out there. One, two, three, four, ones, and then a one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero. And then the rest of that is going to be the 16 zeros we shifted in. So that takes care of the entirety of this expression. Now we're anding with 255. 
and fortunately 255 is a very easy value. That is eight ones in the lower uh, in, in the lower eight bits, and the rest is zeros. And I'm just going to do that because I don't want to write them all out. Anywhere there's a zero, we're going to have a zero in our result. So we're just going to ignore all that stuff, and our result is going to be the bitwise and of of these two things. And because it's all ones, we simply preserve those lower eight bits of, of that result. And that's what we get. And there'll be all these zeros out the rest of here. As a 32-bit int, which in Java is signed, but because uh, the leftmost bit is a zero, the result is going to be positive. Um, so we're just looking to see what that is in, um, in decimal. I should be able to convert it in my head, but I can't. So that is 198. And if we had written this code uh, from the previous slide in Java, that, you know, Z, and Z would, would be storing that value. All right. Uh, you'll again, you'll have some, probably have some of these exercises on your own. I, I promise not to make them 32 bits long, but uh, you will, you'll be able to practice some of this in some of the homeworks.